so a key thing in the classroom is to be able to get your class's attention. I'm here in my classroom right now, and I'm gonna teach how I want their attention, and then we're gonna practice it just a little bit. Here we go. So, this is what I need everybody to do. I'm gonna say class, and you say yes. Everybody with me? Class. Yes. Class, class. Yes, yes. Class, class, class. Yes, yes, yes. All right, so one of the things that makes this work is if you have competition. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do this loudly so another teacher can hear me. And you, are you ready? Class. Yes. Class, class, class. Yes, yes. All right, a, th a next way you can do this is you can clap. So this is what we're gonna do. I'm gonna clap and then you clap like me. Are you ready? Oh yeah, that's really good. Now, this is what should happen. May I use one of y'all as an example? The camera's gonna go on you. All right, here we go. So I want you to turn away from me, okay? And then when I say class or if I clap, what I want is your, can y'all say it? Your attention. I want your knees facing me, and at the least, the minimum, it has to be your eyes on me, mouth zipped. So I have something important to say. Face away from me. Here we go. Class. Perfect. Do it again, one more time. Everybody stay with me on this time as she turns. Class, class, class. Perfect. All right, so that's how you get your class's attention. Thank you for watching. other's attention and how we get the class's attention i'll say class they say yes right. <laughs> and it's a fabulous way for students to like be organized together all right so watch how we do that all right so here we are we're gonna be looking at what's called concentric circles slash lines and what's gonna happen is one side of your class is gonna be facing the other side and there'll be a rotation that's gonna happen through this concentric circles. All right, so if everybody pays attention, what's gonna go on is this. We're gonna give them, all right, a topic to talk about for a certain amount of time. Might be 10 seconds, might be five seconds, might be one minute, might be two minutes. Here we go, let's watch a concentric circle happen. All right, so what's happening is I just gave these students a topic to talk about. They're talking about, they're introducing themselves, they're talking about where they're from, and then they're going to talk about some of their favorite hobbies. So just get to know each other right there. All right, and then they're going to do a little rotation. All right, check it out. All right, so one of the keys to doing this is they we're trying to get students talking. Students really get funny, some of them, when they have to talk. And they laugh. He's laughing. Okay. So we really want our students following certain procedures when we're doing this, such as own that awkwardness, baby. Own it. It's yours. Don't let nobody get you out of your comfort zone. It's your space. It's your world. You do what you want to do. Oh, yeah. yeah. All right, rotate. Well, golly. Only talk to the person that you're speaking to. We're rotating. And let's do that one again, coach. Yes, sir. Go. Same conversation. Go. Hi. All right. So the point of the concentric circles is to get conversations happening. Now, how do you use it in a classroom environment when you're learning about history, learning about math, learning about science? You could use it as a review. Let's say as a vocabulary list you're going to use. But this, this could be, a, say, let's talk about ziggurats. All right, three, two, one, go. Let's talk about the Egyptian pyramids. Three, two, one, go. Let's talk about this group of people. Three, two, one, go. Let's look at this math. Um, situation, this math problem, three, two, one, go. Science, this could be a great thing to use all throughout the day. Get them up off of their feet. They don't need to be sitting all day. It's great. Pull 
Why do you cross the bridge? Mm -hmm. If you could go back Another, and relive yeah, like. any year of your life, which one would you do and why? Go. Yeah. Right, let's listen in to what they'd say. They had the best movies. 2006. That's when I was born. 2014. They had the best movies. When I was born. So I could see my world shiny and new. Next big thing after you have an activity is a transition. And one of the great things you can do is just pop up a YouTube and transition into the next topic. You have a conversation about it. So right now we're having a conversation. We're watching a little YouTube video with a little song in it about respect. And then we'll have a conversation about what we saw in the video. And the students are going to break up into groups and have a respect poster that they have to make. Here we go. Let's go check it out. On your poster, that is fine. You cannot be wrong. Say that back to me. So the work, the task, is to create a group visual. How you're going to do that, the procedures, you're only going to work with your assigned group, and because of COVID, you cannot share anything that you write with. The only thing that you're going to share, really, is writing on this poster. Does that make sense? You'll, you just write on it where you write on it. Get together, brainstorm, talk about what you think this should look like. Okay, we're going to separate people uh, and put you in probably about six different groups. So we're talking about four, five, maybe six people in a group. And the finished product is going to be this. In about 15 minutes from after we get started, 15 minutes later, you're going to come back into this room and one group is at a time is going to come up and present their visual. We do not expect it to be masterpieces. We don't expect it to be pretty. You're only working on this for 15 minutes. Just do the very best that you can. Does that make sense? Are there any questions at all? Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. If you have a birthday that is January or February, come stand in this corner. Make sure you keep your mask on. All right, so we're going to break up into groups based on uh, the month that you were born in. We'll break them up into groups of four, and then we're going to get after the work. We'll see you when they're doing the work. All right, all right, so here we go. We have the students actually doing the work, working together, creating graphic organizers that describe the task. And you can see one group working here, all four of them separated, wearing their masks, say the same thing, and they're talking and conversing. Pretty good activity. Now, what I've done in the front is I've given them a timer that they can watch. That's how much time they have left. And some cool music in the background. Yeah, so welcome at a, to a group project. The most important thing is not the groups coming up here, hitting home runs, doing an outstanding job with their visuals. The most important thing is that our audience is showing respect to those people who are up in the front. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Here are ways that you show respect. Treat them exactly like you're treating me right now. We don't want a lot of silliness. We don't need a lot of laughing. It takes a lot of courage for groups to get up here. Not everybody. Some people, it's natural. You love it. You love the spotlight. Some people, it takes a great deal of courage to stand right here with eyes on them and talk about it. Now, here's one thing that we want you to do. When you hold your paper up here, we don't want you passing it back and forth. We want one person to hold it and everybody else in the group kind of talk about it. And when that person needs to talk, just kind of get to the side and talk about it. But only one person's holding it. We don't want a lot of moving around. Does that make sense? Here's the last procedure that we ask. Stay in front of this podium. I'm in front of it. Don't get beside it. Don't get behind it. We want you off of this wall. Stay in front of the podium. Coach, I'll turn it over to you. Okay, so I want to reiterate the main thing, all right? In your science classes, you were taught in anatomy that you listen with what part of your body? Your ears, and they lie to you, okay? You listen with your eyes. I want everybody to look at the ones up here. Y'all are finished with your projects. If they're beautiful, that's great. If they're not, that's great. It's not about being beautiful. It's about getting up here for your first time this year and being comfortable and saying something and then we'll applaud and we'll sit back down. So everybody will look at the people up here talking with your what? Eyeballs, Eyeballs all right? And that'll give them your attention. Like 99% of y'all are doing that right now. See, I, I don't know if the person, the people that are not looking at me, if they are hearing me, right? So look at me when I'm talking, when you're up here, look at the people. It's a sign of respect, respect which is our topic. First group will be
a volunteer who would like to go first all right your group come on up all right so let a group volunteer to come up in the front and let's see what they do all right see when everybody has finished bye bye and also like if you're somewhere where you need to be respectful you should have the manners you need but you should also figure out what it, what am i supposed to do here if you're in like some massive building that's supposed to be really important in this age of covid it's really tough to like give them instant feedback unless you make gestures you gotta go last stuff like you gotta go last slide you've got to talk to them you might say hey good job yeah that's great amazing so you have to say things through the middle of things because it's hard to give them feedback instantly good job all right that's how you give feedback instantly all right all right so this is another way to transition since we're two teachers working together, we're just transitioning from one classroom to the other to introduce a new topic. And this next topic's fabulous. We talked about respect earlier. And now we're gonna talk about attitude. Let's have fun. See you in a little bit. Carl Swindoll and attitude. Trust him. I actually like the way he started first, but that's okay. So it goes like this. The longer I live, the more I realize the impact of attitude on my life. Attitude, to me, is more important than facts. It is more important than the past, than education, than money, than circumstances, than failures, than successes, than what other people think, say, or do. It is more important than appearance, giftedness, or skill. It will make or break a company, a church, or a home. The remarkable thing is we have a choice every day regarding the attitude we will embrace for that day. We cannot change our past. We cannot change the fact that people will act in a certain way. We cannot change the inevitable. The only thing we can do is play on the one string we have, and that is our attitude. I am convinced that life is 10% what happens to me and 90% how I react to it. And so it is with you. We are in charge of our attitudes.